Hey, it's Jim N4 BFR. As you know, I moved into a new place in Florida, which means I got to put up some antennas and I'm starting with this one. Uh, I finally have the uh, room to put up a 160 meter antenna. So I am working on this off center fed dipole and uh, hopefully it'll work really well for me. I thought I would give a few tips and talk a little bit about as I was putting it up. So I've got the center up at the moment and uh, got a little video of that. One of the things that I'm gonna do now that I'm starting to put the uh, dipole legs up is I grabbed myself a piece of string and I just looped it around the element uh, somewhere near the middle because I know the way my trees are set up, I'm gonna wanna be able to pull and adjust this, but I don't want the string set in a long time. So all I'm gonna do is loop it around and be able to pull it off when I'm done. Right now, I've got it tied off here to a little uh, knot in my fence, and that's just gonna allow me to make sure that it doesn't slip away and get too high from me before I'm able to use it as an adjustment. Here's what it looks like. There's a little knot right there, and I've just got a little run of string, and it is, uh, just looped around this element loosely so I can use it to pull it as I'm trying to work around some low tree branches and get it up nice high in the air uh, and make some, get it where I want it to be. So next up, I've got uh, one of the ends laid out out there. And over here, I have my tennis ball launcher. So I'm gonna try and get myself something up on one of those. Now, next up, before I shoot this thing, a word about safety. I have looked long and hard and made sure that there are no other wires or power lines that I could possibly get into here in my backyard. So I'm not shooting anything near any power lines. Also, I'm gonna be careful that I'm only shooting in my yard. So I'm gonna shoot it a high arc and I've got plenty of room from the neighbors on that side and on the back side, but I'm gonna make sure I'm shooting on a high arc so I'm not getting into one of my neighbor's yards. So look for wires, shoot it high. So there's where my tennis ball landed. It went way farther than I thought. I had to get it high up. I didn't have a as high of an angle as I want, but still landed in my yard. So now it's time to start pulling some line. Here's another tip. Since I'm working alone, I'm working right off the spool of my string here. That allows the spool to stay on the ground so I don't accidentally cut it and lose the end in the tree and lose all my work. So here's the end of my dive hole. And I want you to take a look and see that I actually have two ropes attached to it. The first one is gonna be my pull up line. So this is what's gonna put it up in the tree and hold it up in the tree. The other one is gonna use as a pull down line. So in case anything ever happens and I need to get the antenna down, I got the opportunity to do it without yanking on the element. So that's my plan and we're gonna get this up in the air. Here is that far end that was connected to the spool. I'm gonna pull it up from here, but you can see I just tied it off to the tree uh, to uh, keep it from going away while I did the pull up. Now I've gotta start managing to get it around the limbs as it's going up. So I've got this pulled off a little bit. It's already above one of the limbs over there and I'll work to kind of manage and go back and forth between the two until I get it where I want it. So I'm holding on to this uh, line that I'm using to work my way around the branches. And I think I've got my end about as high up as I'm gonna get it, but I know I'm gonna eventually wanna put the center up. So normally I would pull this off, but for now I'm just gonna tie it off and save it until I have time to work the other end, uh, work the center where the feed point is on the dipole. It's not surprising that the, my special function kicked in and I was definitely able to uh, wrap this pull-up line around about a half a dozen different branches that were on the ground. So I'll take a few minutes and sort this out. Now that I got to use my special talent and untangle all the pull-up line, there it is just nesting there in case I need it to uh, take the antenna down at some point in the future. And there is the pole down line, just tied off a little bit in case I need it later. Okay, it's time to put up the last line for my dipole. Now, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently here. Two reasons. First of all, I know I have power lines in this area. I've got them to the south across the street, 
and to the east on the other side of my house. So I will only be shooting my line either to the north or to the west. So I am shooting away from the power lines at all times. Secondly, this is going to be right in the middle of my front yard. So instead of using that white uh, cable, I'm going to use this. This is a hundred feet of paracord and I'm going to use it and loop it. So it'll be one continuous loop. So I'll have a pull up and a pull down. So let's go ahead and set that up. So good news is that I figured out a good spot. 27 pounds was enough pressure to just get it up over the trees. Beautiful shot, but my line broke because it's fouled. So I'll be back in a few minutes after I unfoul the line and be ready to shoot again. Okay, we're back. It's 10 minutes later. This is well and truly fouled, but I was able to salvage about 70 feet of it uh, on a winding so I can hopefully uh, get this one shot done and then I'll have to um, buy more uh, monofilament and completely cut this off and rewind it and fix the uh, fix the carrier because the carrier's cracked in the middle and it's all winding inside. So anyway, let's go ahead and try and get the shot again. So the nylon line is up. I'm going to sacrifice it at the end uh, because, it, like I said, it's all wound up on the spool uh, and pull the new stuff through with it. Uh, and then we will should have an antenna. I'll give you a different point of view of where I'm doing it right after I get some bug spray because these little things are homicidal. New house, no bug spray. I guess I'll just have to worry about it. Okay, so the tennis ball is behind me over here on the lawn. Uh, I have started to pull the black cord through. I need to uh, do my magic and untangle because I've got the uh, tangle gene. And once I get that done, we'll pull the rest of it over. Last thing I'm going to do before I start pulling from that side is to tie off this side onto something heavy so I don't accidentally pull it back up to the tree and lose all my work. Here's some good news, bad news for me. It's high enough that 100 feet isn't quite enough to make a loop. It's still, the other end is still up in the top of the tree. So what I am going to do is I'll supplement it with this for now. And then later when I get it settled, I can add some additional black nylon cord. This really just means that the bugs get more time to feast on my milky white flesh. I'm sure that there's a better way to do it, but here's how I do to attach these two ropes. I'm put, uh, making two loops and I'm kind of pulling them through each other uh, and then uh, I'm going to make a big knot here as well. So the idea being there's a couple of failure points as I'm trying to pull this up because again, don't want to lose what I've got. Give myself some slack because we've seen how it goes with this tangling. I need this glove to keep that monofilament from biting into my hands. And when I get the piece I want, I'll cut the cord with that. Let's take a look at what we've got. So here we go. I've got one loop, which will allow me to pull down and pull up as I need it. I'll eventually replace this white nylon cord with black paracord, so it all looks nice in my front yard. But now I'm gonna go ahead and pull over the other piece of the antenna uh, so I can attach the element and raise it up. Looks like it's untangled on that end, so I just need to make a bridge to this uh, rope here and start to hoist it up. Got a short section of green paracord. Just gonna connect it to the end here. So while I've got this knot here, I grabbed a wire tie and I'm gonna uh, put a wire tie around the ends of the knot just to make sure, give it one more little piece of protection that it doesn't slip apart as it pulls and strains and those kind of things. So that is done. I'll turn that up and I'll put it on the 
line. So there's my element with the connection made to it. I'm gonna pull it up and I really wanna make sure that it gets up a good 10, 15 feet in the air at the lowest point. So if cars are driving in it or we get trucks in the driveway, that kind of thing, uh, it won't hang up. Now, I think it will probably be higher than that, but wanna make sure I'm gonna put that little slip line on there like I used before and get that uh, going as well. So I've got the extra option. Okay, just take a look at this before I put it up. I've got the two lines connected. I've got it double knotted. So there you go. You can see both knots. And now I'm gonna put a wire tie on it just to make sure for sure before I go and put it up. A little belt and suspenders so it doesn't pull off later. All right, let me grab my glove and start pulling. I'm gonna show you the wire going up. So here you go. All right, I think I got it pulled up as high as I'm gonna get it, so I'm tying it off. Okay, got to tie it off here. I'm going to hide this white cable a little bit, and then we'll just walk the whole antenna and take a look and see how we did. Okay, so up in this tree here is the long end of the antenna, and we're going to walk it here and follow it along. There's my temporary uh, pole line there. I'm going to let that go in a couple of minutes, but we're walking it through the yard. Here is a pain point that I wanted to make sure I didn't have any trouble with. So I'm looking at where the line crosses the driveway and it's a good 12 to 15 feet up. So I'm gonna call that good for now, but eventually I do want that higher. That's gonna be really uh, about when I get the uh, center point higher uh, and then that'll kind of naturally fall in to the other point. Here we're coming up on the center point there. And uh, there's the center point of the dipole in the tree, got the coax connected, like I said. And then if we follow the other line out, it goes this way. This is the, the uh, first element we put up. And uh, there's, the, there's the pole line rope there to help me manage its placement. And we're going all the way down here. And uh, there it is, ending up in that tree about there. I for sure got a little sweaty in the floor of the sun doing this in the, at noontime one day. So, uh, but here we go, everything's up now. So the last thing I want to do, put it on the antenna analyzer and make sure that I'm getting what I expect before I hook it up to my radio. So we're gonna pull this off, pull this top off. We'll set it there on this handy fence post. SO239 connects to the PL259. I press the button there and I press this for ham and it's gonna start me off at two meters and uh, that's not what I'm looking for. We're gonna go all the way down. Let's go down all the way down and start at 160 meters. And on 160 meters, uh, it's telling me it's uh, between two and 1.8 to one. So I should be able to handle that no problem. Next, let's go up to 80 meters. And it's telling me on the high side of 80 meters, I am at 1.3, so I got some places to play there. Uh, 60 meters is a no-go. 40 meters, which I don't use 60 meters a lot anyway. 40 meters is telling me 4.6 to one, a little higher than I had hoped. Uh, so we'll have to take a look at that a little bit. Uh, 30 meters is 2.3 to one, so that's doable. Here's 20 meters, uh, 1.24 to one and rising. So I could make some adjustments to this maybe. Uh, I'll have to figure out, is it a little short or a little long for where I want it? 17 meters is a no-go. 15 meters, I'm looking at 3.5 to one at the high end. On 12 meters, I can get in uh, around uh, four to one. Uh, I don't care about 11 meters, so 10 meters. Let's see here, it's gonna be 
uh, 3.7 at 29.9 to one. So definitely have some opportunities for adjustments. Uh, I will have a chance to play 160, 40 meters. We'll see how my tuner likes it on the other bands. And we got something in the air and sometimes that's just half the battle. So how did having the new antenna work out? It worked out pretty well, I'm pretty happy. I made some contacts on 20 and 40 meters yesterday with just the new antenna. And you saw that even though it wasn't quite resonant on those bands, I was still able to use it with my antenna matching and make some contacts. And I got DX too. So here's a map of where I made all those contacts to. Really excited to get some folks in the log and start having a good time on the air again after being off for a couple of months. So sometimes you don't have to have the perfect antenna to get on the air. You just need to have what you can use right now. And so, Hope you get out there and have some fun with it. I'm Jim N4BFR from Ham Radio Prep. Check out our other videos. If you want to get involved in Ham Radio, check out our videos and check out our licensed courses, hamradioprep.com. We'll see you soon. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.